Welcome to Storyboard, where we take you from idea to finished film. We are filming The Idea with our special guest, Caitlin Lopez, who's amazing. She's yeah! I am! Everywhere you want to, we're what gonna talk happening? a different way. Oh, what are you, so now we get to talk like this? If I want to talk, is that like what's this, happening? I can talk. Hey, 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 and the Dunning-Kruger effect is that thing where you have somebody who is not an expert in any way in a certain field, but believes by virtue of their own belief and their own minor skills that they are. People watch singing television shows where people compete and somebody goes on and they think they're fantastic. They're tone deaf. They can't match pitch to save their life, but they believe more than anything that they deserve to be on that show, that they deserve to get all of the accolades without any training. It's a hard balance to strike. There is the, the balance of, I know that I may have talent in this area. I need to own up to it. I need to own it. I need to not let it consume me because it's just a talent and talent without training or structure is nothing. How do I stop myself from sabotaging my own uh, passions <laughs> with this fear of this delusion? Uh, I think that one reason it took me so long to get to this point and start really pursuing my passion was because of that fear. So it is this fine line that I feel I walk every single day, which is um, I want to be an expert. I have a healthy dissatisfaction with where I'm at. I will work to get better, uh, but I need to not fear the fact that I may be on the right road to becoming an expert one day. Let's pull them. I'll pull a character card. Please do. That's society. Yeah? Yep. Please. We're in this together, right? What are you? What are you pleasing for? <laughs> what is like? What constitutes? <laughs> this good, card, you guys. What constitutes a good one? You, you guys, guys like, you might have to keep that mustache. <laughs> I told you, I am growing this facial hair legitimately because if I have to have facial hair in this show, it takes me a long time to grow facial hair. Hitchhiker picker upper. Is in conflict with. Pig. Mm. Over blood. I mean, this seems like a really straightforward thing. I think so. Uh, to me, it's definitely a serial killer pulled over by a cop. Oh. <laughs> the pig. Yeah. Uh, and the conflict over blood is the fact that their car is covered, covered in, blood. in blood. I actually really like that. I mean, it's very straightforward. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, I am not so secretly uh, a fan of true crime. It could be comedic. It could be easily comedic. Absolutely. It could also be absolutely terrifying. Right. Uh, I think if it is more of a sincere take or is kind of true crimey, I would imagine that the person driving the car somehow like doesn't think they did it. Like a moment where like they get to like what is because the blood all over their car is so obvious like such a pinpoint yeah that like they couldn't pull them over and be like no I didn't do it officer I mean you could be comedic and have just blood all over the car um, but I feel like it would be fairly short and it would be hard not to become really sketchy the less blood the less comedic it is and it doesn't have to be covered in blood it doesn't say blood everywhere I know it has this secondary character and we're saying I said police because pig is you know it's great. Um, great but it could also be an internal conflict of whether to go to the police or what, who to contact or what to do with the little information you have. If it is someone who has been in a situation where they've, you know, woken up, for example, looked around and there's like, you know, their hands got blood on it or mm -hmm. something, and it's trying to piece together what's gone on, that's something that I think a rational person would be like, I need to get the police involved or something needs to happen. Right. At the same time, what if I did something and I don't know about it? Mm. Do I need to tell someone? So they wouldn't have to necessarily specifically interact with a police officer. Just the idea that I'm in conflict with the law by questioning whether or not I've committed this murder. Like, I like that they can be still in conflict with the, something that's not uh, 
physically present, I still feel like they're in conflict with that. Um, I, I would say that if it was a woman protagonist, mm -hmm. if, um, <laughs> I think there would actually, first of all, the victim or the person who's dead, maybe not a victim, who knows at this point, uh, would need to be somebody that they'd want to help for some reason, right. um, that they would sort of bend those rules for. Uh, in that way, I think it's actually a little bit more subversive, maybe? Okay. Only because uh, there is this code of like, okay, here's the checklist we're going to go through to make sure we don't get killed. I feel like that's the blueprint. So who feels super passionate about this one? <laughs> who wants to write it? I mean, I, I would love to, to try my hand at writing it. Dude, I think that would be awesome. Having written mostly for theater, it's, this will also be an interesting... What's great is it's a one location thing. Yeah. yeah. I've been so it's actually really similar to... Right. What I find really interesting with this is that so much of it is going to be nonverbal. Mm -hmm. That essentially <laughs> half the script is going to be more of an outline than anything else. The thing that you have to do um, is map out this murder. Um, that is the scariest part of this, but I kind of love that problem. Ultimately, I'm really excited for the plan for this one, too. So, and I'm really excited for you to to write it. I'm uh, like so for excited for that. Thanks for having me here. I'm really excited. <laughs> Thank you so much.